Hey guys, so we're just gonna do a couple of these. Uh, the first one I wanna look at, uh, please, is number four. So this is off of your practice that you are working on in class today. Um, so first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the derivative of the ln of f of x. Okay, so remember what ln of f of x is, is it's you're going to take this f of x value and plug it inside ln. So if this is my f of x, I'm going to dump that inside my ln function. So what I really want is the derivative of the natural log of x squared plus 2x. Okay, now from here, I want to take the derivative of that. Well, remember that the derivative d dx of ln u is u prime over u. Okay, and then remember, since this is a natural log, I don't have to put the ln b, but if it wasn't, I would have to put that. So from here, I'm going to put my u prime on top. So if this is my u, my derivative of that is going to be 2x plus 2. And then my derivative, or whatever I put on the bottom, should be the original. So just stay in x squared plus 2x. Okay, hopefully not too hard for you. All right, go ahead and turn the page. We are not going to do a ton of these. Um, I tried to break it up into several small videos just so you could kind of check your work. So the next one that we are going to look at, um, we're going to take a look at number... Where is it? Um, let's take a look for me, please, at number 13, okay? Take a look at number 13. So first thing I want you to do is go ahead and read through it. Okay, so number 13, you have e to the 2 over x. We are trying to take the derivative. So the instructions, at least, are pretty straightforward. Now remember, the derivative d dx of e to the u is going to be e to the u times u prime. So if my exponent is e to the 2 over x, that's going to stay the same. But then I need to multiply by the derivative of this. And here's the problem. Okay, that looks like it needs quotient rule. But remember that I'm allowed to do a rewrite. 2 over x is the same as e to the 2x minus 1. Now, just think about those exponents for a second. So if I take my x here and I pull it up to be with the 2, that's where this negative 1 is coming from. So when I take the derivative, my first term stays the same, but then I need to multiply by the derivative of this. Well, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Then I take away one more, my x to the minus 1 becomes an x to the minus 2. And then I'm like, well, wait, I don't want to leave it like that. Let's come back up here, turn it back into a fraction again. So that would be negative 2 divided by x squared. Since the x has a minus 2, that's what drops it back down to the bottom. And then from there, we would be looking for our answer. So scan through those, see if you see it anywhere. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be that one. Because you have your negative 2 over x squared and then your e to the 2 over x. Okay? Okay, one more like that. Take a look at number 14. It says to find the number of zeros on f on the closed interval. Now, keep in mind, this is not asking for critical numbers. Zeros are the same as x-intercepts. And x-intercepts are the same as roots. Okay, so we are literally just trying to find where this guy crosses the x-axis. So remember, the way that you find x-intercepts is you're going to let y equal 0 and then solve. So we are not actually taking any derivatives on this. We're just taking the original, setting it equal to 0. So if I let e to the x sine x be equal to 0. Okay, well then think about e to the x, that's never going to equal 0. Okay, if I try to set e to the x equal to 0, that's not going to work. No real solutions. Okay, that's what ns stands for. It's no solution. Okay, well then, all right, well then i got to look at sine x. When is sine x equal to 0? Okay, well, we kind of covered this yesterday. Okay, remember on the unit circle, 
Okay, here we go. 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and then 0, negative 1. Okay, the ordered pair goes cosine x, sine x. So if I want sine to be 0, that means I need my y to be 0. That's going to be here and here. So I'll have x equals 0, x equals pi, and then when I bring it back around, x equals 2 pi. Now notice, typically I could keep going, but it says right here I want to be on the closed interval 0 to 2 pi. Also note that closed means that you're going to include your endpoints. So because those are brackets like that, that means that I can keep 0 and 2 pi as my answers and say there's a total of 3 x-intercepts. Okay. All right, let's do one FRQ. Um, if you want to for me, please. Uh, so you have FRQ number one. FRQ number two is here. FRQ number three, you don't have to do this one. Okay, we did one just like that in your notes last time, so you can ignore that. Okay, um, we are going to do... And we'll just do the first one. Okay, and then you'll do the second one on your own. So number six says find f prime, then find f double prime. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is do a rewrite on this. Okay, k root x is the same as kx to the half, and then minus ln x. So if that's my real f of x, once I've rewritten it, then I'm ready to take the derivative. So part a says f prime of x equals, take my one half times it down, now it's half of k, then I need to take away one from a half, well that's gonna be minus a half. Okay, and then the derivative of ln x, hopefully you remember that one, derivative of ln x is one over x. Now I'm realizing right now that I times my one half down on the k, I took one away but I forgot to write my x, so I'm gonna put it back in here. Okay, remember that k here is representing a constant, so x is actually the base of that. Okay, so first derivative, check. Now we need to take the second derivative. So f double prime of x. I need to take the derivative again. Well, I'm going to take my negative one half, times it down on my one half. That's going to give me negative a fourth, multiplied by the k. And then if my base was a minus a half and I minus 2 over 2 more, okay, well then think about if I do negative a half minus 2 halves, that's negative 3 halves. Now, this term here is a problem. I need to do a rewrite on that. So if I were to do a rewrite on that, think about how I would write it. Um, it's 1 half kx negative a half minus if my x is on the bottom and I need to move it up, that's really an x to the negative one. That's my rw, my rewrite. And then from there, I've already taken the derivative of this first term, minus a fourth, minus one more is negative three halves. But now when I times my negative one on my negative, now it's a plus x. And then when I take away one more here, I get to the negative two. Okay, so take the first derivative, check. Take the second derivative, check. Part B says, we'll find the value where um, of k where f has a critical point at 1. Okay, so remember, a critical point means that f prime of x at 1 needs to be equal to 0 or undefined. So we need to find the value of k so that I get a critical point at 1. Well, let's think about what we have here. Now, I don't like this version of f prime because it has a bunch of ugly stuff in it. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite my f prime of x. So if it's a half k, that's fine. But my k is going to be over my square root x. Now, think about why that is here. If my x is to the minus a half, that really belongs on the bottom. So you can snuggle it up next to the 2 and the half, or you can kind of wrote it, write it how I did. Okay, then from there, minus 1 over x. Now, remember what they told me. When I plug my x in here of 1, I need to get a critical number. Okay, well, let's think about 
if I do 1k over 2 root x minus 1 over x, okay, well, then I need to get a common denominator. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to say, okay, well, then I need to multiply a root x here and a root x here. Now, here's how come that needs to happen. Okay, when I multiply root x times root x down here on the bottom, okay, these guys are going to combine to give me k root x over 2x. Okay, now look at your second fraction. I already have the x that I need, but I need the 2. So I'm going to multiply by 2 on top and on bottom. That's going to give me minus 2 over 2x. Well, now I can slap all that together into one fraction like that. Now, remember what we said. Okay, if 1 is a critical point, that means the derivative has to be 0 when x is 1. So at this point, I would say, okay, well, either the top needs to equal 0 or the bottom needs to equal 0. Now, if I set 2x equal to 0, then the only critical point down there is going to be when x is 0. Where do I want my critical point to be? Remember, it said my critical point needs to be at 1. So I'm going to say, okay, well, then it has to be the top equal to 0. So k root x minus 2 equals 0. But then what do I know? My x needs to be a 1. So that's k root 1 minus 2. Well, then that's really just a k minus 2, which means that k needs to be 2. And what that means is that when k is 2 and x is 1, my first derivative comes out to be 0. Okay, then it says, for this value of k, come back up to the question. Determine whether f has a relative minimum, maximum, or neither at 1. Okay, so from here, I'm going to rewrite my derivative here. I'm going to make it a 2 root x minus 2 over 2x. And I'm going to set up a number line. Now remember, I technically have two critical numbers. I have 0 and I have 2. So remember, why did I put a 2 here? Because I found my k is 2. Okay, so let's plug in a number smaller than 2. Let's say we pick 1. And actually, hang on, my critical number was 1. So let me change this here. So we're going to make that a 1, okay, because that's my critical point. So remember, 1 off the top, 0 off the bottom. So smaller than 1, let's say that I plug in a half. Okay, ready? So I'm plugging in right here. So I have the square root of a half. Well, that's going to be a little bit bigger than 1. We don't know exactly what it is. Or actually, hold on, what is the square root of a half? Square root of a half would be a little bit smaller than... Actually, hold on, here's an easier way to do it. Take the 2 out. And to me, that makes it a little bit easier now to do a sign chart on. So if I pick a really little number, let's say a half, and then I square root it, it's going to get even smaller. Then I minus 1, this side is going to come out to be negative. Okay? Now also keep in mind, I have a 2x on the bottom, but half a 2 is going to be a 1. And when I divide by 1, that's going to keep it negative. Okay, other side, bigger than 1, maybe I pick 4. Okay, I'm going to plug in 4, so let's plug in a 4 right here. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 minus 1 is positive. Multiply it by 2 is positive. Divide by 2 times 4 is positive. That means that my graph's f prime changes from negative to positive. That means that f of x changes from decreasing to increasing. And if that happens, that I know that x equals 1 is a relative minimum. So relative min because f prime of x changes negative to positive at that value when k equals 2. Now, 